It's time to eat. What are you hungry for? Sit down and get ready to consume an abundance of fantasy football knowledge from Ross Tucker and Joe Dolan. Feed me now. I'm starving. On the Fantasy Feast Eaten Podcast. Yeah, let's eat, baby. It is the Fantasy Feast Eaten Podcast presented by DraftKings. $200 for $1 in a bet at DraftKings Sportsbook using the code Ross. Ridiculous, almost as ridiculous as people out there that don't listen or watch the Fantasy Feast podcast before setting their season-long or DFS lineups each and every week. I'm Ross Tucker at Ross Tucker NFL. He's Joe Dolan at FG underscore Dolan. We are the Fantasy Feast at Ross Tucker pod. And fantasypoints.com is where it's at. Use the code 21FEAST. Get all the fantasy info and maybe win the free Madden this week. It's like a win-win. Speaking of win-win, Joe, let's dive right into it. We already did the 1 o'clock games yesterday. Now we'll get to the late games and we'll start with the Minnesota Vikings, very disappointing, and the Arizona Cardinals, very encouraging. Yep. You know, this is one of those games where – I think it's going to tell us a lot about both of these teams. You know, people are high on the Cardinals. Kyler Murray is going to win the MVP. And, you know, Minnesota is on the down downward trend and their defense is bad. Let's start with Arizona. Kyler Murray, I mean, whether or not he's going to win the MVP, I know he's a fantasy MVP. Uh, over his last uh, 17 games, uh, dating back to week one of last year, Kyler Murray has finished as a top 12 fantasy quarterback and on a higher percentage of his starts than Patrick Mahomes has. Wow. And Kyler Murray didn't even really need to do it as much with his legs in week one. So there's something interesting to see. Um, the receivers were getting open at will against Tennessee. Uh, I mean, at will. Um, the bad news is, Ross, we talked a lot about A.J. Green on this program. In a game where Christian Kirk the biggest fantasy tease of all time is getting open at will in a game where Deandre Hopkins is crushing people in a game where Rondale Moore goes for four for 68 in his NFL debut, despite running just 14 routes, AJ green has a very 2020 stat line. He catches two passes on six targets. I needed to see it from AJ green. I was willing, you know, the report, Oh, he's having a great camp. I was willing to buy it. I didn't see it week one. And I didn't see it in a game in which the the Arizona Cardinals could do anything they wanted through the air against the Tennessee Titans. That's a bad sign for A.J. Green. That being said, Minnesota did not have a good game in that secondary against Cincinnati. Jamar Chase ran right by Bashad Breeland on his touchdown, and he also put uh, Patrick Peterson in the spin cycle. So this is a, this is a uh, tough matchup yet again for Minnesota. The one thing I will say... Christian Kirk, this guy, I am so freaking sick of this guy. Ross, Christian Kirk in his NFL career has 14 touchdowns. Four, in four-year career, he has 14 touchdowns, 14 receiving touchdowns. Nine of them have come in games in which he scored multiple touchdowns. So he has had four blow-up games in his career and a whole bunch of nothing else. I'm not getting fooled just yet. I'd rather have Rondale Moore on my fantasy roster. One more point in the backfield. 58% for Chase Edmonds, 49% for James Conner. But Chase Edmonds maintaining the lead in that backfield in a game in which the Cardinals were runaways from the Tennessee Titans, good sign to me. Uh, Chase Edmonds is the guy I want to play in this backfield. He had over 100 yards from scrimmage. Oh, and he ran, um, uh, let's see here. The, the the exact number is he ran uh, routes on 68% of Kyler Murray's dropbacks compared to only 24% for James Conner. Chase Edmonds has the fantasy rich touches in the Arizona backfield. And as for the Vikings on offense? Well, I love the Vikings on offense, Roth, because I t- say it every week. They're narrow. Thielen scores touchdowns. Jefferson gets targets. Dalvin Cook gets 30 touches a game. Kirk Cousins puts up numbers in good matchups. And despite what you might have seen last week, the offensive line's a concern for Minnesota. Don't get me wrong. But despite what you might have seen last week, 
The Arizona Cardinals still, to me, have one of the two or three worst cornerback situations in the entire NFL. I expect Jefferson and Thielen to eat in this game, just uh, provided that the Vikings can keep Chandler Jones out of the backfield. Let's get to Atlanta and Tampa Bay. Oh, my God. Um, Atlanta was atrocious. I mean... Atlanta got blown off their home field on both sides of the football. The Eagles' offensive and defensive lines ate them alive. I have a hard time seeing how Tampa Bay won't do the same, Ross. Tampa Bay's got a great offensive line. Tampa Bay's got a great defensive line, just like Philadelphia. I don't see how the same thing doesn't happen. Um, I thought Cordero Patterson looked better than Mike Davis in the backfield, quite frankly. Uh, But Mike Davis had a true bell cow role. He had 16 carries and six targets. So, He's kind of an RB2 for now for me, but the problem is the matchup sucks. The one guy I'm interested in, I mean, you have to play Calvin Ridley. You have to. He caught three passes on the opening drive and just two the rest of the way against Philly, but you have to play Calvin Ridley. Kyle Pitts, eight targets in week one. He was the primary slot receiver for the Atlanta Falcons. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers lost Sean Murphy Bunting, one of the best slot defenders in the NFL. I think Atlanta is going to try to go back to the well with Kyle Pitts in this game. But this game, I mean, this is a two-touchdown spread. Um, the markets have crashed on the Atlanta Falcons, and they've crashed on the Atlanta Falcons for good reason. What about the Bucks? Start them. Brady, Evans. Evans is going to bounce back this week. Um, Godwin, A.B., start them. If you want to start Gronk, you know, uh, Atlanta gave up a touchdown to Dallas Goddard last week. Start them. I, I don't care. The backfield is the question for me. Um, Bruce Arians comes out this week and says, well, you know, Ronald Jones is going to start. I don't think Bruce Ar- Bruce Arians telling his kids Santa Claus existed. He didn't lie as much about that as he lies about his running backs. I mean, I, I, there's no way in my mind you can play Ronald Jones this week in a season-long lineup. Maybe you take a flyer on him in DFS, but he got benched for fumbling. Ross, you and I had more fantasy points than Ronald Jones had last week. Maybe he gets an opportunity. Atlanta stinks. Atlanta got grinded up on the ground by Philadelphia. Um, There's opportunity here, but if I'm playing a back from Tampa, it's going to be London Fournette. Interesting. Okay. Um, I can see that, but it is interesting that he never should have benched Ronald Jones. It was a terrific strip and knockout. Yeah, and by the way, and what's funny is Fournette had a bad drop that ended up getting picked off which is probably more of a mistake. But here's the deal. I call it the Janice, Janice's razor. What coaches think of players impacts how much those players play. You might think it was unfair that Ronald Jones got benched for that fumble. But if Bruce Arians doesn't think it's unfair, Ronald Jones doesn't get fantasy points just because you think he shouldn't have gotten benched. That's the way I look at the situation. What I think is unfair is that there are people out there driving around without Duralast Elite brake pads which are available exclusively at AutoZone. Look, the name of the company is Duralast, like built to last, proven. But they've taken this to a whole other category. Their advanced technology with the Duralast Elite, three times longer than a typical Duralast pad. That is good news, especially if you're not a lot of stop and go traffic or you got heavier loads in your car. Look, I don't understand the science. They got a fancy hex pattern, keeps them performing longer. Sounds good to me. I even like that you get high-end brake performance with low-end environmental impact because they're copper-free. Plus, AutoZone has 6,000 locations nationwide, so you can go pick them up today or you can order online. The future of stopping starts with Duralast Elite Brake Pads only at AutoZone. Joe, let's get to the Titans and the Seahawks. A lot of people have a lot of questions about the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, um, that was an awful performance. And one of the most discouraging things I saw in week one. By the way, I'm willing to just give teams who really laid an egg. uh, uh, Teams that at least I thought were going to be good, like Tennessee and Green Bay. I'm willing to give those teams a pass more than I'm willing to give like Atlanta a pass. Um, in week one, but one of the most discouraging things I saw, Ryan Tannehill, over the last couple of seasons, since he arrived in Tennessee, quite frankly, has been the most prolific passer in the NFL in terms of efficiency and usage on play action. The Tennessee Titans ran two play action passes in week one. I Look, I know you're playing from behind, 
But play action's a cheat code. You're putting your game, your video game, on hard mode by not running play action. Dumb, 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 dumb. Dumb across the board. I mean, and and um, look, they're, they're near touchdown underdogs here in Seattle. That's not good news for Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry produces basically half as well in losses as he does in wins. So this is not not a great matchup for Tennessee after a really disappointing egg laying performance. So I'm I'm a little nervous about Derrick Henry in this one. Not that in season long you got to play the guy DFS. I'm not going near him, but in season long you got to play the guy. But don't expect the the kind of ceiling that you're used to seeing from Derrick Henry in this game. Really disappointed with the performance. I think you got to play AJ Brown and Julio. Give them another week. But I can bench Tannehill this week, and I can bench him easily. I thought Todd Downing completely lost the plot in his first game as the Titans' uh, offensive coordinator. What about for the Seahawks? Well, the Titans' uh, secondary was eaten alive by Arizona. Um, let me tell you something, though. If, if if my life depended on picking the right Seahawk wide receiver for DFS, I, I Ross, I I would have. I would have been, I would have done passed away years ago because, you know, Xavier Rhodes is out against the Colts. I'm like, DK, baby, seven for 170 and two touchdowns. Here it comes, four for 60 and a touchdown. Tyler Lockett, he's still running. He's still running. I mean, it, it's like, oh, I, it, it's impossible. But I will, will tell you this you're starting both of these guys against that abominable Tennessee secondary. Russell Wilson had no resistance from the Colts. He sure as hell not going to see it from the Titans this week. Um, Chris Carson looked really good in week one. Rashad Penny, he's back on IR with a calf injury. He's somebody who doesn't have the DNA to play NFL football. Um, so I'm in. I'm in on uh, Chris Carson as an RB1 this week with the, with the Seahawks favored at home. Gerald Everett and Will Disley. Everett did get in the end zone. Disley ran nearly as many routes as he did, though. So just keep an eye on that tight end situation. The Cowboys play the Chargers. Man. Both these quarterbacks, Joe, were very, very impressive. I'm really looking forward to it. The Cowboys' passing game was awesome. And in particular, Amari Cooper. I mean, 41.9 fantasy points. It really, for me, it was the DraftKings performance of the week presented by Bacardi Spiced Rum. Joe, I had some concerns as to Amari Cooper's health coming into the year. And everybody ate. CeeDee Lamb ate. Gallup ate before he got hurt. And Amari Cooper, 13 catches, 139 yards, two touchdowns, 16 targets. He was $5,900 on DraftKings, by the way. But I, I thought he was worthy of the DraftKings Performance of the Week presented by Bacardi Spice Rum. I would agree with that, Ross. And uh, let me uh, let me give uh, everybody a little bit of a little little advice here, Ross. I've done the research into this game. Here is my here is my very very deep thoughts on Chargers Cowboys. Start them, start them all, start them if you got them. Fifty five is the total in this game. That is sky high for the National Football League. Start him across the board. C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper, start him. Ezekiel Elliott, I know last week, whatever, start him. The Buccaneers' nasty defensive line. I, I, I think you're. I think you could be concerned, but start him anyway. If you're playing DFS, Cedric Wilson is going to step right in to the Michael Gallup role. Start him. He's going to be cheap uh, for the Chargers. I know people are concerned about Austin Eckler. No targets. The good news is he got both of their goal line carries and he ran a route on half of Justin Herbert's dropbacks last week. And most importantly, it seems like he came out unscathed. So that's that. That's the good news on Austin Eckler. I would start him. Keenan Allen. I didn't think about Keenan Allen once on Sunday. You know, I'm trying to pay attention to like um, to everything going on. Jerry Judy got hurt. So we're trying to scramble on that. I don't think I thought about him once on Sunday. I look at the box score at the end of the game, 13 targets, nine catches for 100 yards. Start him. Mar Mike Williams. He's got a new role here. They were talking him up this offseason. Um, he ran shallower routes. Nor he, they didn't use him 
on uh, on those d- downfield routes. He's he gets 12 targets. He averages 9.1 a dot. He had 14 over 14 yards a dot last year. Start him. He like at 55 points on, on the board here, Ross. I mean, it's going to be chalk for DFS. This game is going to – people are going to slobber up all the players in this game for DFS, but for good reason. You know, if you want to create a little bit of leverage, maybe Cedric Wilson, maybe Mike Williams. People people have been burned by Mike Williams, but he had a different role, and he looked really damn good in week number one against the football team. Yeah, he did. All right, the game I'm doing, Joe, Sunday night football. Ooh. It will be the Chiefs and the Ravens from Baltimore – I'll be on the call for Westwood One, so if you're driving around Sunday, listen to your boy. Uh, I'm curious to get your thoughts on both these teams. They had two crazy games. Chiefs came out on top. The Ravens lost in overtime. So, uh, Ross, let's just make it easy with the Kansas City Chiefs. You're starting Tyreek Hill, who's a slate breaker. You're starting Travis Kelsey, who's a slate breaker. You're starting Patrick Mahomes, who's a slate breaker. The only guy you're really making a choice on is Clyde Edwards-Alaire, who had a bell cow role, but just didn't get the touches because why the Chiefs don't need to run the football. Why do you not need to run? Why do you need to run the football when Tyreek Hill's getting averaging 20 yards a pop on 11 catches? Like, it, I mean, let's just get it out of the way with Kansas City. I can't say anything profound there. They didn't have anybody else who emerged as a tertiary uh, fantasy option. Me, Cole Hardman, they're going to be talking this guy up in 2047 that that it's going to be his year. Just nobody else but the big four on Kansas City. Let's get that out of the way. Baltimore is more interesting. Baltimore is more interesting to me. They're three-point home under. When's the last time the Baltimore Ravens were underdogs of this long? At home. Three and a half point underdogs. This game opened at one, by the way, and now it's three and a half. Um, The vibes aren't great on Baltimore. The offensive line was atrocious against the Raiders. Alejandro Villanueva is still looking for somebody to block. Um, Lamar Jackson did not throw the ball well, but he was consistently under siege. The good news is Hollywood Brown, he finally got going. Sammy Watkins got going. They're going to need those guys against Kansas City this week. Um, I like Hollywood Brown as a wide receiver too this week. Lamar and he seem to be on the same page. Um, Mark Andrews ran a route uh, on basically all of Lamar Jackson's dropbacks, but he only had five targets. I'm not worried about him. Um, In the backfield, Ross, I I presume you watched the Monday Night Football game? Of course. How did Tyson Williams look to you? Because to me, he looks... He looks like he's kind of built like a receiver in a way. He's got like that. He's he's kind of tall. He's thin. But yeah, he some he's got a different body, different body yeah. type. Uh, look, he's got some explosiveness to him. The thing I liked about him is he caught three passes in week one. Uh, I think Latavius Murray is going to be involved. But if I after after the Monday Night Football game week one, I would much rather have Tyson Williams on my fantasy roster. I mean, I I I said that before Monday Night Football. Definitely after Trenton Cannon got cut. So with Lev Bell time, that's another sucker bet. I talked about it on yesterday's podcast with Mark Ingram. That's a sucker bet for fantasy because people have heard of of Le'Veon Bell. Tyson Williams is the guy I want in this backfield. What about you? You mentioned any? I mean, there's not really receivers. Lamar. Well, I like Hollywood Brown and Sammy Watkins. I think you could throw in there as a wide receiver three this week in a Sammy Watkins revenge game. But uh, he actually led the team with eight targets and led him in receiving with 96 yards uh, against the Raiders last week. So Sammy Watkins for now is alive and well. Last but not least, Monday Night Football. It's the Packers hosting the Lions. Are you sure this isn't least? <laughs> Uh, well, I, aside from the Thursday night football game, what a no show by the Packers, Ross. I'm not panicking. It reminded me of the game last October when Aaron Rodgers and the boys went down to Tampa and got smacked around. It was a worse team, but Aaron Rodgers apparently has a bad record in Florida. I'm not really like, and they played in Jacksonville that they no showed that game. If they no show on Monday night against Detroit, then I'm panicking. I don't think they will. This is uh, this is a stardom across the board for me. I think this is a huge bounce back spot for the Green Bay Packers. One thing that did stand out to me, though, about the Green Bay Packers in week one, very clearly, Marquez Valdez-Scantling is the number two receiver on this team. 
behind Devontae Adams. Uh, uh, I mean, look, nobody produced for the for them, but Marcus Valdez-Scantling had eight targets. He out-targeted Devontae Adams, who had seven. Um, so he is a guy who I think you can start as a wide receiver three. Detroit secondary is abominable, and they just lost Jeff, Jeff Okoda for the season to a torn Achilles. The Packers are going to score points, and they're going to score them in bunches in this game, in my opinion. The Lions offense was a little frisky in the second half, Joe. Yeah, and it was exactly what – it. look, if a team's going to be bad, Ross, we'd like them to be productive and bad. And the Detroit Lions were productive and bad. Who were let, – let's just throw it out there. Ross, do you know who the three highest drafted Detroit Lions were for fantasy? TJ Hawkinson, mm-hmm. DeAndre Swift, mm-hmm. and Jamal Williams. Oh, geez. Okay. Who were their three highest scoring fantasy players in week number one? Those three. Bingo. So if the Detroit Lions are going to stink, at least get the ball into the hands of the guys who we drafted. TJ Hawkinson is going to blow up this year. Uh, um, DeAndre Swift, there was a lot of hand wringing about his role. Well, Anthony Lynn, the former running back, is running his offense, actually, in my opinion, quite smartly because of the talent there in the backfield through the backfield. DeAndre Swift, 11 carries, 11 targets. Jamal Williams, 9 carries, 9 targets. Both of these guys produce for fantasy. Both of them are RB2s for me. Uh, With DeAndre Swift, potentially, after all the panic of the offseason, let's see what happens against Green Bay. He's got RB1 upside for me with that kind of usage. 11 targets is good for anybody. It's exceptional for a running back. So uh, that kind of usage, I'm happy about it. Um, At receiver, unfortunately, Tyrell Williams is hurt again. He's got a concussion. I'm not terribly interested in any of these outside receivers, but just keep in mind for the future, the two target leaders at wide receiver for the Detroit Lions in that game were Quintez Cephas and then the legendary Trinity Benson. Uh, They had seven and six respectively. Amon Ross St. Brown was the predominant slot receiver, though. That's probably the guy I'd lean to. But the guys I want to play for this game are the two running backs and the tight end, TJ Hawkinson. And just keep an eye on I'm not telling you to start him in week two. Jared Goff attempted 57 passes in that game. If the Lions are going to play at the pace they played at, they ran 84 plays in week one. Anthony Lynn's Chargers were historically high-paced. Jared Goff's going to have some fantasy value. He could end up being one of the top three or four passers in the NFL in terms of pass attempts. And that's good for fantasy, whether you've heard of the guys he's throwing to or not. He is Joe Dolan at FG underscore Dolan. I am at Ross Tucker NFL. We implore you to go to fantasypoints.com. Use the code 21FEAST. We will get you everything you need to know about every game, every relevant skill guy in about 60 minutes total, maybe a little over that if there's 16 games, a full slate. But we'll do it every week right here on the Fantasy Feast Podcast. We're done. Thanks for listening to the Fantasy Feast Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and the College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mention DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 109WITHIT. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, doesn't always. Sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 